just a brief recap of the previous lab. What was done was uh, in introduction to microcontrollers in, in general, uh, some idea of the sort of resources that are available in a microcontroller. So specifically two resources you are exposed to. One is ports, programming of ports and the other is the timer unit. You are also exposed to a cross compiler interface. That is the interface that allows you to write code, click a button which will generate the executable which can then be flashed on to the microcontroller. Okay? So this was what was done uh, the previous time round. Uh, this per se has nothing to do with experimentation, but it has the tools that you are provided here and, and the sort of interface that you are exposed to plays a significant role in how you process data and that you are going to get exposed to in this lab. You will understand the power of uh, microcontroller based programming as well as the power of utilizing uh, a device like a microcontroller this time around. Okay, so this lab gets interesting. So what you will uh, end up doing is you will understand the power of microcontrollers, especially the programming part of it in the context of real time data processing. And why is data processing important is because sensors put out pieces of information which need to be processed and which need to be analyzed for you to make sense of any experiment you may conduct in which sensors are giving you measurement information. So it's important to be able to process data suitably and this will be the last in your series of how to process data. From now on you will just be using sensors. Okay. Uh, specifically you will understand two things. Uh, you will learn how to build some filters, specifically discrete time filters and understand their behavior. The idea of this experiment is not to learn how to build these filters alone, but to understand the importance of being able to uh, do real time data processing on microcontrollers and this is just an example for you to be able to do that. Uh, you will use a discrete time low pass filter to suppress noise from a noisy sensor. So a sensor will be given to you, uh, a contraption will be given to you which produces a significant amount of noise and the noise of that comes out of there also can be varied and you will be asked to filter that noise out by suitably use, utilizing uh, infrastructure that in, incorporates a microcontroller. Okay? So that's what you will end up doing in this lab. And the key thing for you to understand at the end of this lab is that you can get all this done only through software coding provided you have the necessary infrastructure in place. So microcontroller with appropriate signal processing circuitry. So the, the power of being able to code what you want to code and get uh, real time signal processing done will come through in this lab. So the setting for the experiment is, uh, is as follows. Uh, you will have an analog input that goes through an ADC. Okay, this analog input can come from any source. It doesn't matter what the source is. It can be a sensor or it can also be something that emulates a sensor. It need, need not be a sensor. As far as the rest of the circuitry goes, it doesn't care where the analog input is coming from. Okay? So an analog input is processed by an ADC. So you get what is a digital representation or a quantized representation of the analog input. Okay? So that's, that's what you get out here, which goes through a microcontroller. So you take in, the microcontroller takes in quantized input at discrete points in time. Okay? So what the microcontroller deals with is quantized discrete time data, processes the quantized discrete time data depending on the code that you write and it outputs quantized discrete time data, okay, which is then converted into an analog signal, which is a continuous time signal, not quantized anymore uh, through a DAC. Okay, this is a setting for the experiment and we will understand why this setting makes sense for the sort of processing that we want to do. In fact, this is the setting for any sensor interfacing that you would do ever. Okay. So this setting is, is very important for you to understand. You may or may not have the ADC depending on whether the information from the sensor is already quantized or not. But if indeed you are dealing with analog signals, this will be the setting for any uh, signal processing, uh, uh, signal processing infrastructure that you may see in any experimental setup. Okay. So for, it's, for, it's important for you to understand this. 
okay now if uh, so br let me briefly allude to something else that you have done okay so what we are talking about is analog signal going in to an adc quantized information coming out which is sampled by a microcontroller does something with it processes it produces some other quantized discrete time information which goes through a dac produces an anal another analog signal okay now suppose i took this part of it out completely suppose this was not there then you just have adc quantized signal dac the stuff coming out okay this is this you must have done in one of your experiments i think this is experiment number 3 take a take an analog signal do uh, adc on it produce bits indicative of the analog value then reconstruct it with the dac okay so this is this is experiment number 3 i think the difference here is that you stick in a microcontroller in between this is experiment number 5 okay so there is there is a reason for why adc dac etc was in, introduced and we will do something that you ended up doing in your first experiment which is low pass filtering but we will do it in the microcontroller okay that's what we will do today but the key thing to for you to understand is it's not low pass filtering that we are focusing on it's some processing of data okay and that can be done in the microcontroller now what the microcontroller would do is that in this case the idea is to reconstruct okay in the experiment number 3 the idea is to make this or worry about what sort of sampling rates you need such that what goes in is this approximately the same as what comes out okay that was the idea of this experiment to understand the rates at which you need to sample such that what goes in here is very similar to what comes out here if you sample too slowly then you have a problem of aliasing if you sample too quickly you don't have any special problem as such in terms of reconstruction but you may be utilizing excess resources than necessary okay in this experiment the idea is not to produce the same thing that goes in here over here but modify what goes in here and produce something else here which takes into account some aspect of the signal that goes in here which you do not want to see in your process data is that clear is the intent of the experiment clear so if i call this signal as u of t this signal y of t i want u of t or i want y of t to be different from u of t in the sense that if i have some information in u of t which is not important to me which i need to reject or if i have some information in u of t which is important to me and i need to select right that job of rejection and selection is done by the code sitting inside the microcontroller now this setting is remains i hope you can understand that this setting remains the same irrespective of what we are processing you are always going to encounter a situation that what you are sensing is going to con contain information some of which is useful some of which is not okay and it's your job to act as a sieve in getting the stuff that you want out of it and rejecting the stuff that you do not want okay and the hardware infrastructure to do that remains just this put it through an adc put it through a microcontroller with an appropriate code put it through a dsc and you're done no matter what sort of relationship you want why to have with you okay the last statement is important it does not matter what sort of relationship you want why to have with respect to you because that relationship that you want can be coded into the microcontroller 
So my hardware does not change if I want to do low pass filtering or if I want to do high pass filtering or if I want to do anything else with the signal. My hardware remains the same. All the intelligence of what you need to do is, is coded into the software. And what you need to do is something for you to decide based on the, the sensing input or the instrumentation engineer to decide based on the sensing input that you receive and, and your understanding of what to retain and what not to retain. Okay? So this experiment is sort of the culmination of all the significant uh, introduction that you need to do real-time data processing from sensed information. Right? If you get if you get a hang of this, then you should be able to relate this block diagrammatic picture that you see in front of you to a data acquisition system in any measurement process. Okay? Fine. So that abstraction is something that you you will you are only exposed to now, but for those of you who end up being engineers, you will at some point in time see that uh, this abstraction makes sense. Okay, so that, that's the context in which we are doing this experiment. It's uh, hopefully that context is clear. If you have any questions at this point, I can I can take it. Any questions on why we are doing ex this experiment and what is it that we'll end up or serving? And the purpose that we will serve is to make Y different from you, depending on what you want Y to be. So what, what will you end up exploring? And then I will get into the details or the necessary background. You need a little bit of, uh, uh, if you may call it, analytical background before you do the experiment. You will end up exploring how does one write code such that Y of T is a processed version of U of T. And I have just used the word filtered in place of processed. What I intend to mean is processed information. Okay. So how does one write code such that you can process this, uh, the, the digital representation of U of T to produce a digital representation of Y of T? Okay. That's one of the agendas. The second agenda is how the nature and the quality of the of the filtering or the signal processing action, you you need to explore changes by just choosing some numbers in the program. Okay, it's it's actually quite fascinating uh, that you can just change some numbers and you can entirely change the behavior of the processing unit. Okay, and we will we will see why that happens through some examples that we will we will go through, but you will actually see it happening. Okay, and. Uh, just to make things uh, of relevance uh, from an experimentation point of view, U of T, the signal U of T after you have done your basic set of experiments, will also be obtained from a noisy sensor. That is, we will give you a noisy sensor, a contraption that keeps producing noise. And you will have to kill the noise through this, through the same sort of hardware that we are talking about here. ADC code in a microcontroller, DAC. And you will see that you will, you, you will be able to kill the noise or you will be even able to accentuate the noise. You can do lots of things. So all, all of that is there in the code. Okay? So that's what you will, you will end up doing uh, this time around. Any questions? So the question here is, uh, what do you mean by accentuate the noise? It means increase the noise. Accentuate is to make things worse or to make things sharper. That's the word, accentuate. Okay, so now we'll build a little bit of background. Okay, and I'm going to relate it because we are going to end up doing low pass filtering as an example because you have seen such processing action before in your RC filter circuit example where you built a elementary low pass filter as a means to get used to the oscilloscope, function generator, etc. So we will just revisit that very shortly, uh, five minutes of that and then we will do the same thing in discrete time and understand why we are able to do the same thing. So you have to pay attention here because this is conceptual. This is not some plugging some wires here and there and observing something. Okay. So you remember this this circuit that was that you were introduced to. How many of you remember the circuit? Okay. What the circuit is useful for, it has a variety of purposes, but one of the things that it is useful for is that 
V0 is a low pass filtered version of V V in. Okay, so I, if I may call it V out and V in. Okay, so I am going to give a brief idea of don't get so offended and all that. It's a fact. So I'm going to give you an idea of one one example of what it means to con construct or what it means uh, for something to be low pass filtered version of something else. Okay. So suppose what I've drawn here is V in. Now V out is as I, I said I use the word low pass filtered. V out is a sieved version of V in. Okay. So let us let's try and understand that. You have all seen a sieve at home. Right. So the sieve has a netting in which if you put, put something from the top and you shake it, you get finer particles below and the coarser particles are left retained the top, at the top. Everybody must have seen this. So low pass filtering is like a sieve. What does the sieve do? It lets finer particles go through, does not let coarser particles to go through. Okay. Low pass filter is a special type of a sieve except that the what you are dealing with is not particles but signals. It lets signals which do not shake around much go through, okay, which do not jump around much, which do not change much go through and it does not allow signals which change a lot to go through. Okay, That is what a low pass filter is. It is some hardware device like a sieve which allows low frequency signals. I mean you have to have the notion of what it means to have free, what, it, what frequency content of a signal is. You must have been exposed to that Fourier series, right. You can decompose a signal into set of sinusoids. So we are talking about decomposition of signals yielding only low frequency sinusoids, okay. But I won't go too much into that. Very roughly signals which do not jump around much will go through if you put it through a low pass filter. What do you mean by how much it should jump around? That depends on our R and C values, which also you should have explored. Okay, so the low pass filtered version of this signal uh, is not difficult to draw if you understand how this signal is composed. So this V in has lot of sharp corners. These are all the sharp corners. Right? Very close to these sharp corners, the signal is changing a lot in a very small period of time. Okay. In fact, the, the slope here is infinite. Right? So very close to this part, the signal is changing a lot. If you put it through a low pass filter, what will happen? Think of it as a sieve. If a signal is changing very rapidly, put it through a low pass filter, what will happen? will not pass. What does that mean? What will happen? What will come out? What will V0 be? V0 will remain flat. In fact, V0 will remain very small and it will remain flat. Okay. Whereas this part of it, between the two, two guys here, the signal itself is flat. It is not changing much. And if you put that through a low pass filter, what will happen? The same thing will come out. Okay. So for this part, you will get very small initial, so V out will be very small initially and for this part it reaches this value okay. and in, in between it does something like this. Same thing will happen here, okay. same thing will happen here. Okay. How the hell did I connect those things up? You, if you think a little bit about it, you will also get it. It's not very difficult. 
the important point I want to highlight to you is that I did not write a single equation here. If you believed that this, in, this circuit indeed behaved as a low pass filter, I am giving you a qualitative argument, qualitative argument for you to understand what it means for something to act as a low pass filter. Okay? Let, let me just uh, spend a couple of more minutes on this. So this is, this is your V out, okay? This is your V out. And then we will get into some detail on what we are going to do this time around. Okay, so now I am going to ask some smart fellows here, right, audience. Is supposedly a sinusoid, really not a sinusoid. Okay, so this is one sinusoid. This we will call the slow sinusoid. This is slow, varying slowly. This is a fast sinusoid. So I am going to ask. Batao kya hoga, isko low pass filtering karunga or isko low pass filtering karunga to. This is slow, this is fast. So this is my V in, this is V in. I want you to tell me what is, what is V out going to be. So the question is, should be clear, I want you to tell me how V, Z, v out is going to look for situation 1 which is slow. Then how is it going to look for situation 2 which is fast. You have to give me a cogent answer. My name is Pratish. Okay, so something like this. In the case of the faster one? Similar but the amplitude will be a little smaller. Than and? The amplitude will look a little smaller. Yeah, that is correct. What you are saying is correct. Amplitude will be a little smaller and? Something else will happen. And? It will be slightly displaced from the... Yeah, very nice. Thank you. So it looks something like this. Very nice. That's the answer. Not only is the amplitude going to be smaller, but it will be shifted, phase shifted. Okay, and you can draw a plot of the change in amplitude and the phase as a function of the frequency of the sinusoid that goes inside. That sort of a plot is called the frequency response plot of a low pass filter. Okay, anyway, so seems like some people have some understanding of this. Okay, so now we will try and understand how to do the same thing using a microcontroller. So I'm going to go back to this, this slide. The key thing first to realize is this signal is not an analog signal. Okay, this is a digital representation of you. The second key thing to realize is that what you can process in the microcontroller is a only a discrete time version of this digital representation. So it's a sampled version of this digital representation. Okay. So let's let's try and understand that. Suppose my digital representation, the ADC, I had a one bit ADC, and I had the ADC behaving as follows. Anything below 2.5 volt, zero to 2.5 volt, I'll call zero. Anything between 2.5 volt and 5 volt, I will call one. Suppose I had a one bit ADC. What you will get here is zeros and ones. Okay, so you will you will get a signal here of, of this form, zeros and ones. By one I mean the equivalent voltage. Okay, so this is the digital representation of this U. This digital representation is going to be further sampled which is going to be the discrete time representation of the digital representation of you. Okay, so I am not going to deal with the continuous time data like this. I am going to deal with sampled information. So that's digital and discrete time. Do you understand what I am saying here? So this will be one, zero. 
information in between is lost or it has to be reconstructed through the DAC. Okay? This is the sort of information that the microcontroller can handle. It can handle only quantized representation of real world data which is presented to in, in discrete time. Okay? So we have some dots going in here and the dots representing the digital discrete time representation of you. What it can produce also is dots. It will produce something else. So let's let's try and understand this a little better. So I have the microcontroller. What goes in as far as what the microcontroller is going to do with it is discrete time data. So if I may draw a graph of this discrete time data, one way for human beings to interpret what is going inside is that some discrete values are going, or sorry, some values are going at discrete points in time. So this is one sampling time, two sampling time, three sampling time. So this is a time axis. And the values that go in make sense only at these discrete points in time. Okay? How many of you have lost, lost what I am saying right now? You are lost. Why are you lost? Tell me. Do you know what sampling is? I am picking only those points in time when I can gather data. We all sample. Okay, so a lot of things are happening in your life. Things are moving seemingly in a continuum. But you pick only those things that register in your brain. Things that you just pick out of what is happening in reality. So you are sampling information from reality. Your brain works like that. Microcontroller also works like that. Okay? You understand sampling? Sampling of you. You is sampled. Sampling of digital or analog. Right? You can do sampling of analog signal. Right? And then you, you can think of it in two ways. One you, you discretize or you quantize it and then sample it. The other you sample it and then quantize it. There are two processes happening. Okay? So sampling and quantization are two different processes. One is happening in the time scale, the other is happening in the Y scale. Sampling is happening in the time scale, you are choosing things. Quantization is happening in the Y scale, you are saying that this to this is 0, this to this is 1. Okay, two processes are happening. Anybody else who has not understood what sampling, discretization and Quantization is? Who else uh, put up your hand? Any, anybody else who does not understand this picture? This is a way of interpreting what goes into the microcontroller. Okay? What comes out is also a picture like this. Okay. It's convenient for me to call this signal U of KT, okay, implying that it is discrete time data. And for convenience, this K is also dropped. So this is U of K. This signal I will call Y of KT, implying that again it is discrete time data, Y of K. Okay? So the microcontroller's job is to pick U of K, do something to it and produce Y of K. And this, this Y of K T then goes through the DAC to produce Y of T. Okay? So what you need to decide is how to relate, the code decides how to relate Y of K to U of K. So that is the main thing you need to understand, code decides how y of k is related to u of k. So 
So now we'll we'll try and understand how you can relate them to do make u of k behave the way you want, depending on what y of k is. So we'll take some examples. So I'm going to ask you to pull out a notebook. I mean literally pull out a notebook, not hope that somebody else will pull it out. And I'm going to ask you to do this. Suppose I relate y of k to u of k in this fashion and we'll understand why, why we have out of the blue chosen some, some crazy architecture. y of k plus 1, 0.5 times u of k plus 0.5 times y of k. So let's understand what we mean by a statement like this, some equation is written, okay. What, do, what does this equation mean? I am saying that the code that is sitting inside the microcontroller, I am assuming that that code does this job, this operation. So the code has to relate y of k to u of k, okay? And I am telling, the, t telling you that the prescription by which y of k is related to u of k is this, okay? So now let's try and understand if this is the prescription, what happens? Okay. Obviously, to construct the next value of y of k, you need the previous value of y of k. So there is memory in it already. You need to have memory for you to be able to construct this and microcontrollers provide you that feature. So we will start with y of 0 to be equal to 0 and u of k keeps toggling between 1 and 0. So u of 0 is 0 u of 1 is 0, sorry, u of 0 is 0, u of 1 is 1, u of 2 is 0, u of 3 is 1, it keeps toggling. So now you are going to work out for me and plot u of k which is easy to plot, u of k goes like this. u of k as a function of k. I want you to plot y of k. Trivial problem, you just I need to compute some numbers. What is y of z y of 0 is 0. I have already said that. y of 1, 0.5 times u of 1 plus 0.5 times y of 0, hmm? oh, sorry, y of 1 is 0.5 times u of 0 plus 0.5 times y of 0, which is 0. y of 2 is 0.5 times u of 1 and 0.5 times y of 1, y of 1 is already 0, so y of 2 is 0.5. What about y of 3? y of 3 is 0.5 times y of 2 which is 0.25 plus 0.5 times u of 2 which is 0. Okay. So y of 3 is 0.25. What about y of 4? 0.5 times y of 3 which is 0 0.125 plus 0 0.5 times 1, 0 0.625. You can keep going on and on. What do you think will happen to this, to this series y of k? We will do one more, maybe you get an idea after that. y of 5 is 0 0.5 times y of 4 which is 0 0.5 times 0 0.625. 0.3125 plus 0.5 times 0, slightly more than this number. Any guesses on what is going to happen? What is that value? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so this series is going to do something like this, but it's not going to grow beyond some limits. So you must have done something like this in sequences and series somewhere, calculus, some, some point in time in calculus. Anyway, 
from an engineer's perspective, what, what needs to be communicated is that U is jumping around quite a bit, is jumping around by one in every instance. Y is not jumping around by one. It is still jumping around, but it is not jumping around by one. It is jumping around by a much smaller quantity. For example, here it is jumping around by 0.25, then 0.375, then little less than 0.375, etc. Definitely the jumping around is, is lesser. Is that clear? But it still jumps around. Not only does it jump around, the points at which it jumps around is kind of shifted. Look at this. Here it is 1, here it is 0. Here it is 0, it's, it's doing something else. Here it is 1, it's doing something. Okay, so there is, there seems to be a, some, some sort of shifting. Okay. This is in fact a low pass filter in the discrete time domain. This jumping around is too much. It's a fast jumping signal. And what you get is a lesser amplitude, whatever he said, Pratyush said that. Lesser amplitude signal, but phase shifted signal. If I can draw an envelope, the envelope is drawn only for convenience. It means nothing else. Okay. All the intermediate values means nothing. Okay. But I am only drawing it for, for the sake of visual convenience. It's not a triangle wave. Okay. So hopefully you see that the y of k is kind of compressed a little bit. I'm not playing any games here. I'm using the same scale for u of k and y of k. Okay. So what what this this algorithm effectively does is that it low pass filters y of u of k. Y of k is a low pass filtered version of u of k. Okay. Now whether it low pass filters Everything or not is something for you to investigate and find out. Uh, and if you give, if you, you can try it, if you give a constant signal, if U of, K, U of K was a constant, right, then what will happen to Y of K? It will converge to some value, which is equal to U of K. Okay, you can, you can try that. Make U of K equal to 1 for all values of K. Start with Y of K equal to 0. You will start converging. So let's do that also. Okay, so how does y of k look? 0.5 times u of k, u of k is 1, plus 0.5 times 0. So here it's going to be 0.5. The next, next instance is 0.5 times u of k, plus 0.5 into 0.5 times the previous value. So what is it going to be? 0.75. Then it's going to be? 0.875, this is just a geometric series. So you take 0.5 away from this is the geometric series. Okay? So the addition every instant is 0.5 to the k. Some, or k minus 1 or whatever it is. So it's going to, you can see that it's going to reach 1 after a long period of time. Okay? Which is what a low pass filter should do. If I, if I have something that's not changing quickly, I let it go through, which means that the same thing comes out. But you have to wait long enough. You put something in, into the sieve and keep doing this. If every, all particles on top are fine particles, after a while, everything is going to come down. It's the same thing. It's a sieve. Okay? So this is what low pass filtering does. So now I'm going to ask you to do something more interesting. Okay, so let's let's work with this picture. So this is uh, y of k plus one is 0 0.5 times u of k plus 0 0.5 times y of k. Okay, that's this picture. What I'm going to ask you to draw is this picture, y of k plus 1 is 0 0.1 times u of k plus 0 0.9 times y of k. Can you quickly draw this picture? It shouldn't take you much time. 
same u of k. Yeah, u of k remains 1 for all values of k greater than 0. Okay, so that is fairly simple to do. You start with u k equal to 0, y of 0 we have assumed to be 0. So, you just get 0 0.1. Next value will be 0.1 times 1 plus 0.9 times 0.1. Okay, so it's 0.1 plus 0 0.09, 0 0.19. And next value is going to be 0 0.19 times 0 0.9, right? So that's 0 0.171 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.271, etc. So, it keeps going on. Where will this reach? So, wait, I am going to ask. It will reach 1? It will reach what? It will reach 1, but it will take much longer to reach that 1. Okay? You will have to wait a lot more for the k to reach that 1. Okay, that is the only difference between the two in terms of or only qualitative difference that we have explored be between the two. One will reach one faster, the other one will reach one slower. Okay. So, the, the second sieve is a finer sieve. It does not allow anything fast to go through. The first will allow some fast things to go through, second will not allow any, any fast things to go through. Okay. So, Qualitatively, there are different low pass actions. Okay? The key thing to understand is that to get a qualitative difference in the low pass action, we have only changed numbers. We have only changed something from 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Hardware remains the same. Now, is that clear to everybody? That the hardware remains the same and you can get qualitatively different behaviors of your processing if you choose numbers differently. The structure remains the same, y of k plus 1 is a times u of k plus b times uh, y of k. Structure remains the same, but you have chosen only a and b differently. Okay? Now, this is the power of a microcontroller because the same ADC D, uh, microcontroller DSC remains, but you just change the code and you are going to get different low pass filters as opposed to building RC circuitry where you have to choose RNC appropriately. You have to change that circuitry. Okay? So, if you have a signal processing system that is processing information from sensors, you want this capability that depending on the sensed input, you do not know what the sensed input is. You may want to use the same facility for a variety of purposes. You want the ability to be able to process things differently and that ability or that facility is provided to you by a microcontroller because of its ability to process numbers and produce another other set of numbers. So, that is the true power of computing in a microcontroller. Okay, it is true power of programming. The structure of the program remains the same, but the program does very different things. So, uh, this is what you need to appreciate tomorrow and you will appreciate it hopefully, those who are interested in this stuff, uh, you will begin to appreciate it tomorrow. We'll, we are going to do one more exercise which is going to change things quite dramatically. Now, I am going to ask you to do this. Y of k plus 1 is 0.5 u of k minus 0.5 y of k. Tell me what happens with u of k equal to 1 for all k, y of 0 equal to 0. Okay. Again, fairly simple to draw. Y of k versus k. y of 0 is 0, y of 1 is 0 0.5 times u which is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 times 0. Okay, so, it is 0.5, y of 2 is 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5 times 0.5. So, you go the other way, 0.25, okay. y of, so this is 1, this is 2, y of 3 is 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5 times y of 2, y of 2 is 0 0.25. So, that is negative 
plus 0.375, it's plus 0.375. Halfway here. But what you have done here, there is a qualitative difference between these two. First of all, you are not settling at 1, you are going to settle at 0.5. Well, that's besides the point. The main thing is that you are oscillating now. You are not oscillating earlier. In one case, you are just going asymptotically, and in this case, you are oscillating. So, something that was smooth has now become oscillatory. Okay, this is the inverse of what a low pass filter is, it's a high pass filter. Okay. And all we did was change a number, 0.5 became minus 0.5. It can't create a, yeah, hey, none of these filter, well, first order filters will not have the ability to create something on, the, on its own, second order filters can, you can make it behave like in resonant fashion. Resonance is just, you just need an input and people think you will go crazy oscillating like this. No, there is an input frequency because there is a, because y of 0 starts with 0. Okay, that's, that's, we, we can have that discussion. Anyways, you are getting a ripple without some, no, without any ripple being given to it. Okay. So, the, the point I want to highlight is that by changing numbers, you can get very different characteristics. Okay. So, you can build all sorts of different filters. This is only one structure and just that single structure with by changing numbers you are getting very different characteristics. Okay. So, now you can imagine if you have there are infinite set of structures with infinite combinations of numbers that you can choose for those structures. So obviously, you can get infinite different ways in which you can process y, u of k to produce y of k. All the infinite different ways are available to you as a programmer. It is up to you to choose what, what makes sense. Okay, so, if you want to do low pass filtering, do low pass filtering. If you want to do something else, do something else. But the structure remains the same, ADC, microcontroller, DAC. Okay? Is that clear to everybody? Okay. So, what the DAC does is take this Y of KT and produce Y of T, which is in principle, all it does is interpolation. Okay? The act of converting something which is a digital representation to something which is analog is interpolation. You have to fill in the gaps. Okay. That's what the output of the DAC is going to be. Now, what I have said now actually is, is a deep philosophical point. It may not rhyme with you immediately. It's fairly deep in the signal processing sense that a digital to analog conversion can be interpreted as an interpolation problem. What sort of interpolants you use, etc. That's, that's a whole different issue. But you are just joining the dots in some way. You can either join it through a, some sort of polynomial or some other thing depending on what your interpolating functions are. Okay, So, this is going to be your y of t. This is going to be the other y of t. Here the y of t approaches 1 faster, here it approaches slower. Okay, So, hopefully I have illustrated the idea the main idea behind tomorrow's experiment. So, I am going to repeat it once more, then we are going to get done. Yeah, so the interpretation that it is high pass action, etc., is because I already know it. Uh, we can discuss whether it is really high pass offline, but the point I want to make is by changing numbers, you can change behavior. Okay. Mm, not necessarily. Again, we will, we'll so it is not the point of the discussion here, we can discuss it just after the class. That is a finer point. Okay, So, the main thing that you need to remember is all measurement processing systems which are worth any salt will look like this. Take something from a sensor, put it through an ADC, process it in a microcontroller, produce something, either you recon reconstruct an analog signal or do something else with it or you store this information in a computer. Okay, All of them are going to look the same. So, if you can picture a you look at a measurement system and say, oh, this is this is what is happening here. This is the ADC part, this is the microcontroller part or the equivalent of the microcontroller part and this is where storage happens or reconstruction happens. Then we have done our job to communicate the main abstract idea behind this data processing. Okay? The power of this sort of architecture comes from the fact that you can make Y of T very different from U of T depending what, on what you want to do with y, U of T by only changing the program in the microcontroller. 
okay so it all boils down you understanding all this math that was written there y of k plus 1 blah blah some structure was given similar structures you need to understand the mathematics of it be able to analyze it utilize your information about how different mathematical objects behave and code your microcontroller in such a fashion that you get the sort of behavior you want okay this is why you need to know how to analyze equations because you can actually do very drastic things if you do not know what you are putting in there it's not for fun that you write some equations down karavi right you play with this you will do crazy things if you change numbers and that's what i want you to observe when you do the experiment i mean it's it's an experiment so just keep changing stuff and you will see crazy stuff happening even for seemingly minor changes plus to minus is a big change but even seemingly minor changes there will be a big change in the way what you get out behaves okay so with this the introduction that you require so i hope now you understand why it was important for you to know what what an adc is you have to have physically seen the beast what a dac is physically seen it what a microcontroller is have some idea of how it looks how to work with it what a cross compiler is it all that is necessary before you get to this point this is a culmination of all our efforts so far after this we are not going to do you know uh, electronics per se we will we'll do sensing okay we'll consider other issues related to sensing sensing not not the electronics part of it and the last experiment will put everything together sensing electronics everything for you to be able to estimate the value of acceleration due to gravity in a in a fashion that you will i hope appreciate okay so that's that's what you will end up doing in this lab before you disperse any questions okay so done